Um, so what I want to do in this video, and we're recording it uh, offline as well, so I'll edit that and put that up on YouTube, is just take a look at this UX 360CA, which scored 83% in our four review, which is up at notebookcheck.com, notebookcheck.net right now. So take a look at that uh, for all the details. But let me just give you an overview of uh, the device now. So it's a 1.3 kilogram, very nice, very light, sturdily built, 360 degree convertible, so yoga style. Um, on a 1.3 kilogram device, tablets aren't that cool, but that mode is excellent, and I love this layback mode. I have a Lenovo 710 Yoga at home, and I use it all the time. Um, let's just go over a few of the components now. Uh, as I said, full review at notebookcheck.net, notebookcheck.com for the German version. So go there if you want all the details. But full HD screen, IPS, good contrast ratio. Brightness is not that high. 300, around 300 for the maximum brightness. So it's not really an outdoor capable display, but it's good contrast on there. Color accuracy is for black and white, I think we're eight, for color around five. Uh, you want to be getting to five and below for the really good accurate color. So not bad. We've seen some screens which have had some really dodgy color accuracies recently up in the 10 range. Uh, obviously, tending towards one is perfect. So that's not bad there. It's obviously touch and it's obviously running Windows 10. Let's move down to the keyboard. It's a non backlit keyboard. Let me just move in a little bit closer there. And it's a little bit clicky. Sebastian Jensch, the reviewer on this, also mentioned that the keys are a little bit clicky and there's a little bit of give, probably less than one millimeter actually, in the middle there. Having said that, it might be something you can get used to. I think it's got a good click through point and a good bit of resistance on the keys and probably about one, one, 1 1.2 millimeters of, of travel there. So um, could be could be good, although it's not backlight, backlit. So uh, using it uh, at Nighttime or in press conferences or in the cinema where your kids are watching something is a no-no. It's not going to happen. Um, down to the touchpad. I haven't had a lot of testing with this. You're going to have to take a look at the, uh, the full review for Sebastian's uh, review on the, the touchpad. Overall build quality really nice though. There's nothing scratch, nothing creaking, nothing moving here. What's really interesting on this, have a look at some of these ports here. So there's the power, there's a full USB port there, that's USB 3, USB C port there, that's not for charging, because there's the power port there, and a micro HDMI port there, and a headset port there. But look on the other side, full SD card slot. Um, you've also got another USB port there. So that's really interesting because you've got a 13.3 inch full HD, reasonable quality display here. This could be good for photographers in the field. And I'll tell you why it could be good. Um, um, extra good is because of the battery inside, a 54 watt hour battery inside. These sort of devices are getting around a 30 to 40 watt hour battery. So if you look at the Surface Pro 3, Surface Pro 4, uh, Mix 700, they all had around uh, 40 watt hour batteries. This has got a 53 watt hour battery, which means you're getting that extra sort of one or 200 uh, grams in weight. But I think that's gonna be worth it because the battery life on this uh, is going to be quite nice. In fact, I can quickly just flip forward to the battery uh, test results we got for you. Uh, I'm looking at the full review on overcheck.net and because I didn't do the full battery test, I haven't got that in my head. And so we're getting Wi-Fi surfing of six and a half hours and idle 17 hours. Uh, we did do a video test on that one, but it's usually around the same as the Wi-Fi, a little bit more maybe. And if you're in an aircraft cabin where the uh, ambient light is low, then you'll probably get a good 10 hours out of this uh, using H.264 and uh, the Windows 10 video app, which is a, an efficient app. So that's nice. Good battery life, lightweight, nice build. Core M3 inside, so it is fanless. I would like to see a Core M7 version of this for a bit more productivity and maybe a bit of 1080p video editing. I've done some 1080p video editing, uh, 30 frames a second uh, video editing on uh, a Core M5, no problems. And you get to 50 frames a second, you start pushing in a few uh, filters and effects, things start to get a little bit slow. But I think for on the field basic videos, press conference sort of videos, the sort of stuff that bloggers do, events, Perfect, this could be really nice uh, for doing that. And I'll be, uh, after this video, loading up my uh, Pad Director 14, that's the video app I use, just to see how that uh, performs over time. Because this is a bigger chassis than the 11.6 inch versions, of course, so you might get a little bit more thermal advantage, so dissipation 
across the bottom should be better. And because this is not a tablet, you haven't got the screen backlight working with the uh, processor and mainboard to give you that uh, extra heat problem. So the separate uh, keyboard, sorry, the separate screen and uh, motherboard is always an advantage if you're using an M processor because they rely heavily on thermal limits. Uh, not much more else to tell you in this video, so all I'll say is uh, this is the first, actually the second, but our first higher quality Facebook Live video, and uh, I'm just checking over to see if anyone has actually watched. There's five, five people watching this now, so what we'll do is we'll promote this a little bit better in the future, uh, but I'd really like you five to give me some feedback on the audio quality, on the video quality lighting and uh, whether you need to see more close-ups or more details of performance reports. Uh, maybe I could blend some of those in uh, with the editor on my right here. I'm not sure if I could do that. Mm, maybe, maybe, maybe. Um, and don't forget to share this, like it, and more importantly, the feedback on the, the quality. Thanks for watching. That was the Asus, ooh, ooh, price. I forgot to give you the price. Looks like it's starting at around 800, 820 euros in the U in Europe. So that's actually a pretty good price. Um, I guess that if you go to, and don't forget this has got eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigs of fast SSD. I think it's SATA 3. It's not a, a PCIe connected, a very high speed one, but it's a decent, uh, a decent speed SSD in there. I'm guessing if you go to 256 gigs of SSD and a core M5, I'm not even sure if that's a possible combination, you could be getting up to the thousand euros, but I think that might be worth it. This is a really nice device, and I'm a big fan of single unit two-in-ones rather than the uh, takeaway two-in-ones, the separable two-in-ones, so I think this could be quite popular. 83% is what we gave it in terms of uh, score. Go and check the full review out at notebookcheck.net, notebookcheck.com. Thank you for watching. I'm going to hang around for a few minutes just to make sure that the uh, buffered stream goes out on Facebook. Uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks.